Hey everyone, it's Kogi from creativekogi.com and we are now on day 18 and the final, final day of not just your basic granny square. Today we're going to work the border and yeah, and that's the end of this project. So it's the final video, it's the final pattern update. Um, I'm quite sad. So anyway, let's get to it. So round 48. Okay, so yesterday we did those two rounds because I really wanted to create um, the length and almost just bring it all together. And today, I, and I did say two rounds for the border, but I decided to introduce that stitch. Um, and I'm calling it the balancing round and I'll explain to you just now. So in the chain two corner space, you are going to work a standing double crochet and another double crochet. So our corner is now two double crochet chain to two double crochet. Now we are not skipping any stitches. So in that first hidden stitch, you're going to work a double crochet and one double crochet in each stitch. Now the reason why I call this the balancing round is because this allows you to sort out your stitch count. Your border requires your stitch count to be an uneven number of stitches, so an odd number of stitches. And so you, if you're working your blanket and you're, you have an even number of stitches, um, you can easily skip the first hidden stitch on this round to create that odd number of stitches. So there you go. That's, that's the logic to it. So keep going and I'll see you then on the next round. All right then, round 49. And look, that balancing round actually creates a nice balance. Um, so right, I have to now, unfortunately, bring in that green. I run out of um, the blues. So yeah, I have no choice. Um, I think blue and green's going to work okay together. See my blues? I've just got that tiny little ball left. That's not going to help me. Okay, so in the chain two corner space, we are going to work a standing double crochet and then work another double crochet. So the, the corner is two double crochet, chain to two double crochet. Okay. And now what we are going to do once we've worked that half a corner is chain one, skip that first hidden stitch and work a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch, work a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch, Work a double crochet in the next stitch. So this this round's going to go pretty quickly because you are not working in every single stitch. Um, yeah, so it wouldn't take you as much time. And if you find that it's um, pulling together, then just gently tug it and it will lie fairly flat. So let me just work a few more stitches. Um, and also just to tell you, um, how I came up with this with this very, very simple border. Um, so Amanda Clarsons asked me when we were doing the MP Anisa Mandala Kel, like Kogi, how do you like work two rounds above and you know then come back to two rounds below and decide to place a stitch in there? And um, the answer was very simple. Um, I'll, I'll explain it to you. So you have tight stitches at the bottom, then you tight stitches at the top, and then you have this little gaping hold. And I didn't like holes, so I'd work two rounds, and I was like, "Oh, I don't like those holes at the bottom." So let me come back and fill in the holes. And I was thinking of Amanda when I was working this border, and I thought I have to do something where I create the holes and then fill in the holes, and hence the border. But also. Um, old-fashioned blankets had a typical blanket stitch that you probably learned when you were at school and I don't know if you still use it or if any of you still stitch but um, the typical blanket stitch was so effective in blankets and I wanted the border to kind of resemble that let me show you okay so the final round and there we go and um, yeah I'll just give it a gentle tug and it can lie fairly straight and um, let's let's start. So a standing double crochet in the chain two corner space and then one double crochet so that's half of our corner. 
I'm going to not skip that first hidden stitch. I'm actually going to put a stitch in there. So I'm going to work a double crochet in there. But I'm going to skip the next stitch. And there's some logic to this. Um, I'm going to work um, stitches in that skip stitch at the bottom there on the previous round. And I'm going to put in two double crochets in that skip stitch right there. Okay, so look where my, my hook is pointing to. Okay, so two double crochets in the skip stitch from the previous round. And I'm going to work over that chain one space. And that's the reason why I had skipped the second stitch is that I didn't want it to become too um, busy and clustered. Um, and just to create the space, but also create that stif stitch definition where you see that V distinctly. So then in that next skip stitch from the previous round, working over the chain one space, I'm going to work two double crochets. And that's your border. Um, that's how simple this is. And I want to show you a little close up just now of what it looks like. And um, if you have really nice contrasting colors, unfortunately, I don't. But your double crochets from the previous round will end up looking like little balls almost um, in between these stitches. Um, yeah, so let's see. Let me work one or two more and then I will bring it up closer to the camera. So you can see what I'm talking about. And it just, for me, it, it just creates such a nice edge that, is, that has got the weight. So it's not going to lift or curl. And um, yeah, and it's just really simple. Okay, so I just um, caught a bit of my hair in there. I don't know how many of you do that, but I managed to get it out. Um, yeah, it's just a hazard with um, crocheting and if you have long hair like me, or I don't know, pet hair also. I don't have any pets, unfortunately, but so that's what it looks like. And it just, you see the little bubbles and then you have quite a firm border. I don't know how you're feeling about this. I actually would love to know, are you very underwhelmed um, by the simplicity of this? Is it way too simple? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, comment and let me know what you think. Um, I I did it, and I thought I like it, and I probably I have quite a lot of that blue, so I would probably do that optional round where I'm just going to work a single crochet in each stitch and three single crochets in the corner, um, just to give it a nice finish. But you know, this blanket is so simple. It's got simple stitches. And I really didn't want to do a very thick extravagant border. I just wanted to keep with the simplicity of the blanket. So I'd love to know what you think. Um, please do tell me. Tell me if you're going to use it. Because really, this is your creative process also. Many of you are going to make your blanket larger. And I have explained to you already how you could just adjust your stitch count. You need an odd number of stitches for the border. I think it's very effective and I love it, but I'm very biased, of course, because I've created it. But anyway, let me know what you think. Okay, we've reached the end slide, but I want to just tell you, for those of you who are following the video and not the written pattern, I forgot to mention that at the end of the side, when you get to those two last stitches, you will skip the one stitch and then work a double crochet in the last stitch and then work your corner. So anyway, we've come to the end of this. I hope you've enjoyed this journey. I love seeing pictures of your blankets. Um, I will consolidate the daily the daily um, updates all into a single document that you will be able to then download from the website. It will always be free. Um, and yeah, I'll just put a PDF it and you can download it and use it. So yeah, I hope there are other projects and I hope to see you soon. And I hope, um, please do visit my page. Have a look at some of the other things that I've been doing and I'm going to end off with some music and it's just for you, Amanda.